Welcome, everyone, to the Empower Hour. This is Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries. Happy to be back with you again today. Load up your questions in the chat, and I have a couple uh, preloaded, and let's dive in. have some exciting things uh, to talk about with you guys today. So question number one that was given to me during the week, how do you hear from the Holy Spirit? Do you quiet your mind? Is this different from emptying your mind? Um, do you worship during this time? How do you not get distracted by hearing your own thoughts? Um, let's maybe uh, go through these one at a time. Um, and actually, I wanted to also share this. Um, I'll show a picture of it really quick. This is a chart from last week. Um, we actually looked at it in the Freedom Friday uh, time together where we looked at identifying where your thoughts and feelings come from. And we looked at the Satan demonic side as well as the sinful flesh side. And so we I actually wanted to make some time to do this. So if we have time, uh, maybe I'll do that today um, where we actually look at how to analyze the thoughts that come from the neutral or flesh side of who you are, as well as those things that come from God, uh, specifically via the Holy Spirit. Um, but this could also include things like if you were to be visited by an angel in person or in a dream, how to know if it's from God, or if you were to get a word of knowledge, either yourself or if somebody else were to get a word of knowledge and given it to you same thing with prophecy here's how how to know if those things do in fact come from god come from god's kingdom and so um but we'll we'll get into that later if we if we don't have enough questions to dive into um definitely invite your friends Share the link with them. Um, let's get more people. Even at the lowest membership subscription, it's just 10 bucks a month. You get eight live shows. That's less than three bucks a show. Um, and you, you also get some other courses. And you have the access to our community. And so uh, it should be a no-brainer. So let's let's uh, spread this and, and uh, build up the community. So let's look at these one at a time. Uh, I think this is such an important topic that a lot of people struggle with. So how do you hear from the Holy Spirit? There's a lot of different ways to hear uh, from the Holy Spirit. I have my own personal experiences, as well as all of those that are given to me. Um, the next question is, uh, do you quiet your mind? So yes, you seldom do I hear instances where people just get this sort of loud, booming voice that just interrupts what they're doing and says, you know, I'm God. Here's what I want you to do. I know some people who have heard from God that way. Um, I've, you know, I have an experience or two where I felt that I could hear audibly as well, but it wasn't a specific phrase like this. Um, but, but yeah, I think a lot of the time it is, the Holy Spirit speaks to us via our thoughts. And um, so we do need to be able to clear out our mind and uh, get rid of the things that we know are in fact ourself or we know are in fact from the enemy or we know are in fact sinful. And so this is what, this is how, uh, you know, using that chart, distinguishing these things is beneficial because it helps us better identify the source of the thought. And so, yes, you do you do need to empty your mind and get rid of or quiet your mind um, so as to absolutely be rejecting anything that's demonic and to reject anything that is the sinful flesh. And so the only remaining options are good aspects, but they're worldly focused. They're from you or they're from God. Um, 
do you quiet your mind? Yes, quieting your mind, I, I would, I would consider that different than emptying your mind because if you're emptying your mind, like things we've looked at in previous episodes, or uh, in the spiritual warfare boot camp, or in the empowered Christian roadmap, this this idea it's usually embraced by like yoga, meditation, this new age Hindu Buddhist sort of philosophy where the goal is to empty your mind so that you can connect with the universe. Now, this is harmful and bad for one, the energy, the universe out there. Um, it's, it's organic and natural and we, it's not God. <laughs> so we can't connect to it as though it was God and we can't, uh, get rid of um i don't want to get too far in the weeds here so there's nothing we can do to empty ourselves to connect with this vague universe spirituality that then helps deepen our spiritual connection to god in a good way because God wants to be known and worshipped in spirit and in truth. See John 4.24. So God doesn't want us to just connect with him spiritually. He wants us to connect with him in truth. Doctrine matters. What we believe about God matters what we believe about ourself and about spiritual reality and about what he wants for our lives matters. So we need to have truth. And the ultimate source of truth is God's word. So, um, yes, but there is, but there is a time when we need to quiet our mind. We need to clear out the distractions about the things we have planned for the day the, the fight with our spouse, the, you know, the, the bills that need to be paid, that the hobby that you want to do, the conversation you just had with somebody else. You need to clear all these things out of your mind and not focus on them in order to hear from God. Because you can hear uh, all these other thoughts and emotions, and if you're distracted by that, you're not going to be paying attention to what God's trying to say. So you need to get out of your own way first. <clears throat> there's there's one passage. It's sort of um, – this was from uh, – I'm actually going to pull it up. I'm going to read this. I'm not going to pull it up. I'm, I'm having issues. Uh, is the does the video come through clear on uh, on your guys' end? Does it seem high definition? Uh, is the video matching the audio? I'm I'm having issues with the recordings after the fact. So hopefully um, we're recording in ultra high def today. So hopefully that's good. But I think there there might be greater issues when I'm uh, sh you know doing screen sharing, and so. Um, I just want to make sure that that works when I'm not doing screen sharing. But so here's a passage about that gives us an idea about how God can speak to us. And, and we want to be careful with how we interpret this. And I've heard it go in multiple directions. Um, I, I don't know if I want to focus all day on this. Uh, maybe, maybe I will. Holy Spirit, lead the way. So this is from 1 Kings 19. I'm going to read from the ESV. And this is how the Lord spoke to the prophet Elijah. Now, this is a prophet. He hears from God very clearly. He hears uh, audibly. And so how God spoke to Elijah is not necessarily the way that he will speak to every single Christian believer today. Uh, he may speak more like this to modern day prophets, or he may uh, speak like this at times to us, 
but that doesn't mean he's always doing this all day long. And so um, I want to use this as an illustration, but I want to caution us in advance. Don't think that God is always doing it this way um, or that just because he did it this way this time with Elijah, that that means he will always do it this way with all Christians for all time. Right, don't put God in that box. So we want to we want to extract, we want to exegete, we want to pull out the principles of how God did it this time and apply that to our deeper understanding of how God spoke to people and moved through people throughout the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But I think there's a powerful message in this uh, passage that we can and, and there's a phrase that and you'll I'll point it out when we get there but um, but I've also heard some preachers go well God didn't do that that only was Elijah and and I think that that's false also and so I think so let's let's read about what God did with Elijah and then we'll take away some principles so Elijah uh, he had um, he had just he he left where he was and he went to a cave. This is uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 9. There he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And so here Elijah is. He's hiding in this cave. Um, he's fearing for his life. God is speaking to him in a clear way. That's the first thing to notice. First, God's speaking to him already. And he said, he, God, said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. So this big show happens, but the Lord was not in the wind. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I lost my place. Okay. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And let's just take a look. Uh, um, other translations say a thin silence. And I'm going to look through some more translations just so we can kind of really understand the power of this. And ap so after all these major, big, noticeable ways of speaking to Elijah, big, noticeable ways of making his presence felt and known to Elijah, it says, came a gentle whisper a low whisper, a still, small voice, a gentle blowing, a soft whisper, a voice that was speaking softly, a gentle breeze, a gentle air, a still, small voice, a light, silent sound, a sound of sheer silence, a voice still small. I personally like a still small voice. Verse 13. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel has have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, 
return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Israel. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shabbat al of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So Elijah is fearful. He runs. And now, see, it's, it's interesting here because he's talking to God still in this cave, and he can hear him in some way. But there's, there's another way in which he needs to experience God that gives him more boldness, more confidence, a deeper level of understanding a deeper level of intimacy, if you will, in their relationship where he can hear from God more clearly as to what he should do, right? God doesn't just come to him and just tell him what to do at the very end. You're going to anoint this person and this person, and they're going to do this. First, God takes him through this, this process so that he can learn how to trust him better. He can learn how to hear him better. And I think it's powerful here because he's he's hearing from the Lord in the cave. A lot of times, you know, we you know, in the church we use this phrase like God speaks to us in a still small voice. And I think there's some truth to that. And I've also heard some preachers say, you know, he doesn't talk to all of us that way. He was speaking Elijah that way. Well, I think we should be quick not to do either one of these two things. I think we should embrace the idea that God speaks to us, not based on this passage, but based on all of the promises of the New Testament where we're given the Holy Spirit and Jesus says he will guide you and lead you into all truth. And Jesus says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. And all of these other promises that he promises to give us, that he promises to lead and guide us and show us the way and speak to us and give us words of knowledge and that we should seek prophecy and so forth. Okay. So, but if you look at this first, it's this, you know, this, strong wind and and mountains are torn down and an earthquake and then a fire and then after that there's a whisper and the whispers outside the cave so here elijah is and he is he's he's talking to god he can already hear god from within the cave but he hears this whisper on the outside so there's something about we can talk to god where we are and speak to him and hear from him where we are, kind of in the cave, even in our fear, even in our, our shaking and hiding and not trusting in God, we are, um, there's a way to hear from him. Yet God calls us outside the cave. He calls us from uh, outside of the place where we're hiding. Right, he, he calls us from this first come out and desire to meet me. Like, are you willing to get out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to get past your fear and your guilt and your shame and all of the other things that keep you hiding? And do you want to hear from me and have my presence even if it's out here where it's scary. So he calls to him from outside the cave. And, and after this, in verse 13, it says, When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. So, so he, he hears the whisper, 
and it uh you know it, it doesn't really say it, it all the stuff that happened before that the wind the rocks the earthquake the fire uh you know it doesn't really say in the text how elijah knew that god wasn't in there um either way the the point is clear god is saying you're looking for something big and dramatic and and i have the ability to do that but that's not the only i don't have to <laughs> D don't limit me um i can show up however i want to and you need to be okay with that and so there is this he he ends up uh he wraps his face in his cloak he goes out and stands and then it says uh, so he's standing outside the cave and it says behold there came a voice to him and said what are you doing here Elijah, right? And this is God's, God knows what he's doing there um, for multiple reasons. One, God knows everything. He's, he's omnipotent. But also, uh, right in the very beginning, in verse nine, God says to him, what are you doing here? So he asks him again, what are you doing here? And it's not like, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? It's more like, what are you doing here? Like, it's a question of you should know better than this. It's the same thing that happened in Genesis 3 when God, uh, after the fall and after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, and God walks and he goes, Adam, where are you? God knows where he is. It's more about, Adam, I'm going to call out to you, and it's, it's an invitation to you coming out from the hiding place that you're in, right? That's what Adam and Eve were doing. They were hiding because they were aware that they were naked and shameful. They knew they had sin. They were aware of their sin now. And God calls them out and says, come out from there. Where are you? Where are you hiding? Come out. And God does the same thing to Elijah. Come out from there. Why are you, why are you hiding? And I think we need to ask ourselves that question sometimes. Where are we hiding? Why are we hiding? Why aren't we trusting in God? So we ask him this question. And he, you know, and Elijah says, you know, they're trying to kill me and all this happened. God says, go return. I already have 7,000 who haven't bowed their knee. Uh, you know, in 7,007, representing like the number of perfection. So I don't know if that's a literal 7,000, and perhaps it's many more. And he goes, in every mouth that has not kissed him. And so God is in control. He knows what's going on. He's in control of the situation. Why does he show up there? He does it. He does it to reach Elijah. God goes out of his way just to reach Elijah. And I think we need to remember this when we feel uh, that God's taking care of everybody else. He's not taking care of us. You know, Jesus left the 99 to come after the one. And he's still, that just because we're saved, that doesn't change. God still loves us and cares for us. Um, and he gives us our assignment then. From outside of the cave, we can hear more clearly. So first we need to trust in the promises of God, right? And God doesn't need to say, come out of the cave and listen for the voice to us. He's given us a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. He's given us his word so that we know who he is and what he cares about. He's already given this to us. We know we need to get out of the cave. We need to stop hiding. We need to pursue him and his will for us. And when we know he wants to do that, and we do know that from his scripture, now we just need to be better at listening. <clears throat> so, other questions added to this question. Do you worship during this time? Not always, personally. I know some who always start with worship as part of their routine. They have, there's so many different ways to do this. Um, you could, you know, kneel 
on your knees at your bed. You could lay prostrate on your floor. You could have a, you know, there's sort of the prayer closet idea. Like you can have a quiet closet, empty it out, put a chair or something there or a mat and just have like this quiet little dark space where it's just you and the Lord. It's like your private area. There's no distractions there is the idea. There's not a TV there. There's not, you know, there's not people around. It's quiet. It's isolated. It, it has a very specific purpose. And I think there's a benefit to that because sometimes we're not good at tuning out the distractions. And so, yeah, there is a, there is uh, and there's different ways of doing this. And so whatever your distraction is, I don't know if it's the TV. I don't know if it's your spouse. I don't know if it's your kids or your work or the computer or your phone, whatever it is. If it is a distraction, get rid of it, make it exclude it. I don't, um, I don't have that problem. And so what I would do is I, um, I might put my phone on silent mode and I'll set it. But I, a lot of times I'd like to do my quiet time with the Lord early in the morning before people are calling me. I have all my business stuff turned off so it doesn't even – uh, get activated until later on in the day. And so I sometimes I like to worship first and just kind of usher into the presence of the Lord. Sometimes I um, I have a whole playlist. It's available on our YouTube channel. It's, it's instrumentals. And then it says other stuff like for soaking or worship or prayer. And it's basically just worship song instrumentals or um, music, that doesn't have lyrics to it. So that way it doesn't cause distraction. Um, and so it's up to you. I think it's easier to hear from the Lord when I don't have other words that I'm singing along to competing for that. So if I'm doing worship, I'm focusing primarily on worship. If I want to focus more on listening, I'll put on an instrumental or just have silence. And so I think that that's helpful. It helps um, create the, you know, create an environment where you're focused. Um, I, I've done it at nighttime or in the middle of the day, but I prefer and enjoy most early morning um, quiet time with the Lord, where it's still dark outside. I've got, uh, I've got like a little table that I like to sit at, and I'll have, you know my, you know, my coffee or, you know, some kind of drink, you know, caffeinated beverage or tea or whatever. Um, and I have there, I have candles that I can set up. So I kind of have like a nice environment and it smells nice. Um, I also have uh, um, like a, a bowl of um, communion wafers that I use for um, some of our small group things that we do here. And I'll have and so we, and then I'll have juice that will come out and sometimes I'll do, I'll have communion, just me and the Lord. And I'll kind of think about the Lord's supper and I'll even go through the words of, you know, do this in remembrance of me and I'll go through all that. And it's, I'm not ritualistic about these things in a legalistic kind of way. Sometimes I do communion. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I worship. Sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I, uh, I, I know exactly what God has already put on my heart and I'll, I have a journal that sits right on this table and I'll just open it up and I'll start writing it out and I'll start, I'll, I'll write out basically a prayer Lord. And I'll just start basically praying to him, but in written form, sometimes I'll stop and pray or worship or sing or something. Um, and then I'll go back to journaling and back and forth uh, it just depends on how I feel the Spirit's leading me to do. Um, I have my phone there um, playing either worship songs or these instrumental songs. Um, sometimes I will feel uh, that, you know, uh, the Lord will bring a verse to my mind or a worship song and I'll look it up or I'll go to Scripture and I'll start doing a Bible study right there. And I'll just start reading Scripture and, and going through it. And then I might I might write down certain verses that are just really speaking to my soul and I'll put them in the journal and then start talking to God about the verses that he showed me. And so it's like this interactive time where it could be any of these things and God speaks to us through all of them. I have, sometimes I'll get dreams where 
Um, I feel like the Lord is speaking to me through the dream. And then I don't want to worship or do anything else because I'm going to forget about the dream. <laughs> and sometimes I think I'm going to come back and do it and I wait too long and then I forget what it was. But uh, so I'll go and I'll just jump right in the journal mode and I'll start writing out what happened in the dream. And then I'll start asking God, uh, what, what hap- you know, what does this mean? What does this mean, God? Like, what does this thing represent? What does this represent? How do I understand this? And this could be a dream from God. Sometimes it's, you know, even uh, born again believers who are saved, who don't have demons, uh, can still get attacked in dreams. And so um, I've been attacked in dreams before. And sometimes I'll go and I'll talk about those dreams with the Lord and say, how come this happened? What is it? You know, we know Romans 8, 28 says, we know that God works all things for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And that includes even the bad things, even things like a demonic attack or a demonic dream. And so I say, what, what can I learn from this? What can I grow from this? How come Satan was able to attack me in this way? Help me understand. And so there's this... Um, it's, you're really just spending quiet time with the Lord. Like, help me understand, help me think through these things. And the longer you press in, uh, the more you get better at tuning out the other stuff. Sometimes my stomach will start grumbling, and I'll be like, I, in my flesh, I don't want to do this. I want to go eat first. And sometimes that's the most powerful way to fast. Not when you have it all planned and prepared and I'm going to do a 24 hour or longer fast or something and it's all prepared or I'm doing a certain type of fast where I'm only, I'm going to eat food and satisfy my stomach, but only eat certain foods. Sometimes in the morning when it's spontaneous, you're, you're waking up, it's, you're already coming off of a fast, right? You, you, you want to have break fast, you want to break your fast. And so, and, and I just feel like, in that moment, I'm like, no, I'm going to give the Lord this time, right? I'm going to give him my tithe of my day, my my the first and best of my day, of my time and my energy. And so that's that's another way of doing worship, another way of drawing near to the – uh, drawing near to the Lord by just saying, I'm going to deny my flesh in this moment. And even if it's only a half hour or an hour or however long you feel led to stay there, um, today – Today, my, my quiet time with the Lord is about two and a half hours. And other days, it might be 20 minutes. And so it's just give God your first and your best and be expectant that he is showing up because he honors our desire to spend quality time with him. He created us for relationship with him. He wants to have relationship with you. He wants to be speaking to you. He's probably already speaking to you you're just not capturing most of it. It's kind of like someone in your living room trying to talk to you, but you're in the kitchen and you're all busy and you're not paying attention to what they're saying. Go and sit down. Stop doing, stop preparing the meal. Stop being a Martha and serving and trying to do all this stuff and go and be a Mary and sit at God's feet and just listen to him and spend time with him and seek his presence and he will reward you and bless you, and you'll feel like he's speaking to you. And so when you're doing that, then you have the ability to have that stillness of time to tune out the distractions. And sometimes you're not sure what is coming from God and what isn't, especially when you're first getting started with all of this. And so there's exercises like the one we looked at where we're looking at the different voices and how to discern them a little better. Um, another thing you can do when it's just information that you're not sure if it's from God, it's not ungodly, it's not demonic, but it might just be your own thoughts popping into your head. And what I'll do sometimes is I'm journaling. So the journaling helps you capture everything. So you might not notice it when you go back when you're doing it and then you go back and read it and you go, Oh, okay. I see it now. So the journaling is a great way to get better at discerning and listening. And then, so I'll start, I'm journaling, I'm talking with God. So I don't write down every single thing. Sometimes God will give me a vision or something. And, and sometimes I write it down. Sometimes I don't. Um, I had one today that might've been a half hour long 
and I only I just gave like a, a couple were a couple sentence summary of it just so I could remember it and catalog it in my journal that it happened this day and uh, I gave enough information to refresh my memory if I want to recall it later but I didn't write the whole thing out and so but sometimes I'm just writing it and sometimes I'm asking questions sometimes I'm listening for the answers sometimes I am writing scripture or I'm just saying praise your name all glory be to you and I'm just like worshiping via written form in journal um so there's so many different ways to do it. There's not any one way. Um, and it actually, by knowing that there's no specific way to do it, you can get better at hearing the Holy Spirit because he's leading you to do certain things. And so um, I see in here, I just say, sometimes use the note dictation option. It's faster than journaling. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, the only thing I would caution about is um, if you're worried about what's fast you might be staying in that works-based mindset you know to where it's not about just spending quality time with the Lord because it's not so much about the words that we're writing it's the ability to pause and listen and so one of the things that I did to help me get better at it is I would ask God a question and I would write out the question and then I would leave a blank blank line and then I would do – I'd write an A and, you know, I'd write an A for answer and I would just sit there quietly, sit there with my eyes closed. Um, not everybody's like that. I'm a – when God speaks to me, he usually speaks through pictures a lot of the time or even when it's words, it's almost like I see the word. Um, and so that's just – I know some people who can see just as fine without closing their eyes or um, hear and receive in different ways. So, but I, I think often it's, it's like that. And so, um, I'll just sit there and wait and I'll just sit there patiently waiting for God to respond. And then sometimes a whole phrase or sentence will start to come into my mind. Other times it's just a word. And I've, so I've had plenty, I've had sometimes where I'm just like, okay, like I feel like a whole sentence is coming to me da, 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 and I just start writing it down. Um, I've had other times where I get one word and it might be like something that doesn't even make any sense. And I'm just sitting here thinking like analyzing it, like, but I don't understand what that means. It might be like, but and I'm like, okay, but <laughs> then, then the, and I'll just write the, Lord said that, you know, dot, dot, dot. And then before you know it, I'm just writing out sentences and sentences. And it's when I go back later, I can analyze. Does that seem like a genuine word from God or not? Because it's very subtle. It's sort of like this. It's sort of capturing this idea of this still small voice, right? Because there is this this um we we want god to show up in the earthquake in the fire in the mountain moving booming audible voice and and god can do that but he also can show up in the still silent voice right it, it you know scripture doesn't say don't doesn't say don't ignore all of the stuff that the Holy Spirit audibly speaks to you. Doesn't say that. It says be led by the Spirit and to have your mind renewed, right? To have your thoughts renewed in the way that you think. All of all of the 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 promptings are more spiritual they're more i feel i think this i feel this right and sometimes it's a very very strong feeling or or a strong thought it's overwhelming i've had times when 
like I'm talking to people and a word comes to me about them and I'm like, eh, that doesn't make any sense. And I just shoot it away. And then it comes back five minutes later and then it comes back again. And then it comes back again and it comes back again. And I'm just like, um, but even then I still don't get all bold and say, thus saith the Lord, right? Don't have that kind of arrogance. Um, I think just that even even if God speaks audibly, I th I think it's good for us to have a sign of a sense of humility about everything, um, and to leave, and to phrase things in such a way, where we don't attribute to God, of saying things that He didn't actually say, as well as not unintentionally misleading other people by saying by telling them god said something that he didn't say and so if you're not sure or or generally as a rule of thumb most of the time i'll say i feel like god wants me to say this and that's a true statement i do feel that god wants me to say that or i saw a picture i saw a picture of this does that does that mean anything to you so that's, that's all you have to do and so when this so when I'm writing down in the journal, I'm getting better at doing this. I'm writing down these things and so that way I can go back and look at them if I want. And I can't tell you how many times um, I'm writing and I'm just talking to God and I'm listening to answers. And then out of nowhere, in my mind, it pops, you know, a memory from when I was 12 years old pops in my head. And I'm like, could that be a human distraction? Yeah. It could. Could that be the Holy Spirit reminding me of something that I could learn from and remember for an important reason? Yeah, it could. How do you know which one's which? You investigate it. And so what, I, what I'll do is I'll write down in my journal, I'm remembering when this happened, and I'll start to write it out. And then maybe I'll say, and maybe something will come to me as I start doing that, maybe more information, maybe the relevance of why that matters will come to me. Or maybe I'll just, and then I'll go and ask another question. God, does that mean any, like, what, how does that connect with what I'm struggling with right now? Is this, is this for me? Is this for somebody else? Like, what, does this come from you? And I'll just start talking to him, having a conversation. And I can't tell you how many times I'm remembering some childhood thing that seems like it doesn't make it doesn't seem relevant at all and I'll write it out and then God will, you know, later on, he'll lead me to a Bible verse and I go and look up something and I'll write that down and, and then I'll ask him questions and I'm talking about something and then I'm talking to him about something that happened this week or, or last week or something. And then another thing will come to my mind and I'll write that down. And I can't tell you how many times I'm, I have two pages of writing and I've been sitting there for an hour, spending time with the Lord, and I'll get to a place where I write something down, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit illuminates the mind, and it's like a light bulb goes off, and then you just see it, the like the connection, what you just put, ding, connects to that, connects to that, connects to that, and everything makes sense, and it all comes together, and you just know that you know that God is speaking to you. And because if any one of these things just came from you, that would not happen, <laughs> right? But when you see it all connect and how it came into being all came in all these different ways, and then you realize, oh, wow, I'm hearing from God and he's speaking to me. It's powerful, powerful. And so, and I can't tell you how many times that happens. And the more you step out in faith and practice listening to God, the more confident you get that you're on the right track. I've had, I had, um, in fact, that even happened today. Um, I had multiple experiences come together where I had um, something I was thinking about yesterday because I was preparing a um, my own testimony and I think I want to do um, an empower hour maybe next week we'll do that unless we get a bunch of questions to the contrary but it, um, until then I'm just going to build up an archive of things that people ask me all the time 
And so that's what we're going to do. When you guys have questions, we'll answer them. And if not, then I'm just going to, uh, you know, get, somebody will ask one question and then we're going to spend an hour on it. So it is what it is. <laughs> Um, but anyway, somebody, I was writing a testimony that I was preparing. I was going to give, um, we do a, a new believers discipleship evangelism group on, uh, Tuesday nights at the church. And I was sharing my testimony last night and I felt led to, it, we had to do a five, I had to do a five minute testimony and it's, and I, but I've been wanting to like refine it and make it a little better. You can go on our YouTube channel and see like a 13 version, 13 minute version of my testimony. Um, but I, I hadn't consolidated it to make a good, clean five minute one. Um, and so I wanted to work on that yesterday. And it led me to think of things that happen in childhood. Something like, was God showing up at this early age? And how did he show up at this early age? Um, and I was thinking about that, and that was interesting. But I thought it was that's all it was. And then, without even realizing it, um, my buddy, who's who's the who is the the pastor leading last night, he um, his teaching was about uh, analyzing our thoughts and emotions, which I knew he was going to do that because we discussed it, and I helped him prepare how he was going to present it, but. Um, but at the time, I'm just like in the audience with everybody else. And, you know, I helped do a small group, but, but so forth. I, it, basically, I ended up participating in the exercise, which I hadn't planned on doing. And so as I'm doing that, I'm thinking of, well, what's like a childhood thing where, where that might have produced a limiting belief? And as me and this other guy who's a new believer that I've been helping disciple with a bunch of other people, um, we're talking through it. And I'm like, actually, the thing I was thinking about yesterday, I think that actually has hindered me in some ways still even to this day. And that was connected to what he was teaching. And I'm sharing it all with him. And for him, it turns out that I, I guess people like me who, even though we're all flawed and, and fall short of the glory of God, I guess people like me, you know, he's been a part of, I've discipled him, I've counseled him. He's been a part of a bunch of small groups that I've led and all that kind of thing. And so it's, it's easy to see me like, I guess, kind of on a pedestal and to just be like, oh, he's got it all figured out and he's good. And there was always this sense of distance. I, I didn't realize this until yesterday, but there was always a sense of distance that he felt between the two of us. Um, and then when I shared, well, here's something like a, a kind of brokenness that I still have that I was just sharing with him because I'm an open book. I'm not, you know, it's it's like I'll share my brokenness with anyone because it doesn't limit me. God's big and he's already done so much. It it does. It's not a brokenness that cripples me. It's a brokenness that keeps me from 100 percent of being as uh, powerful for the Lord and building his kingdom. And so I want to get rid of these things and have healing anyway. And so I'm just sharing that with him. And um, he's like, wow. Like, so it totally opened the door. He's like, he's like, yeah, I felt like I couldn't hang out with you before, but now I feel like I can hang out with you. And I'm like, what? That's, that's crazy. Like I didn't even, you know, just me being humble and willing to share my brokenness. Um, let him feel like he could relate more to me. And I was like, wow. And so that's something to think about when we're sharing um, our faith with people and even just connecting with other people in church. Um, that's something I wanted to talk about um, at some point when it comes to building relationships and community with other people. Um, don't try to keep all your problems to yourself. Let, let other people in. Um, it may be the very thing that connects you. Um, and that's kind of a powerful thing to think about that um, even more than just having the Bible answers and being the counselor and being the teacher, and he already knew me as all that. Um, it was literally, you know, me, him seeing a fault that I was willing to share or an area where I don't have as much growth as I would like to have was the very thing that, that helps him feel more connected to me. I'm like, that's powerful. And then it, 
And then it occur- and then and then I prayed for him over the stuff he shared. He prayed over me for the stuff I shared. And it gave him an opportunity to to pray for another person, even like a Christian leader, right? Because we all like we're not above that. And so it empowered him to be able to be there for me. And he actually, during his prayer, got a word for and this is not this is a fairly new believer. I bat I helped baptize this guy just three, four months ago, maybe. Um, and he, he's praying for me and he's like, he's like, this, this phrase came, comes to me that I think about and, and, and he starts sharing it with me and he doesn't even realize it. I didn't tell him, but it's basically a word from God to share this test, this part with me. And so he's sharing it. He's praying over me and sharing this thing with me and, and being an encouragement. And so he is, I'm help. It's helping him build up his discipleship and his leadership skill potential being able to to do that for me because i'm a because i'm now available for it um and all of that would not have happened without simultaneously that pastor feeling led to teach this specific lesson on the day that i did my testimony the day where i thought about my childhood and remembered certain things and put them in the back of my mind because I journaled about it yesterday. And then I was partnered with the right person. And then I wrote it down and, and I was in, and, and it was last night was a very um, small turnout, right? We, we've had believe, you know, we've had nights where there was 40, 50 people at this new believers discipleship group. And last night it was like, Ten. And so we had we had three leaders who could lead small groups. And so normally I would break out and I would lead a small group of, you know, five to ten people. In which case I would have been a teacher and a facilitator and helped everybody else talk about their stuff. And so I would not have even done the exercise necessarily to connect all this and share it with somebody. And so this thing, we're like, man, what the heck do we do wrong? There's only 10 people showing up. You know, on one hand, it felt actually kind of like a letdown, you know, and it'd be really easy to kind of get bummed out, um, you know, because it's the pastor and and me and one other guy are kind of like the main leaders over this thing. And then there's like a, you know, another group of leaders that helps with, you know, and then, and so, but like, if this thing fails, it's kind of on us. Um or if it has like slow weeks like this, it's sort of like, eh, what happened? And actually, while we were doing worship that night, even so, this is all. So hopefully, I'm showing you this is the way God speaks to us. So all this, this is not a coincidence. All this stuff happening is what I'm saying. And so you have to pay attention to these little pieces, and look back in retrospect and go, oh, God was speaking through that. I could have noticed it the whole time. And while we were um, doing worship the Lord impressed upon my heart um, to say a word of encouragement to the people that were there. And and after I gave my testimony, I I gave a salvation call for anyone who was there who has not yet been saved and everyone there had been saved already. And then, um, and since nobody was saved, I didn't have to lead anybody through that prayer and all of that. So I had like an extra two minutes and I said, you know, I I felt like um, the Lord impressed this on my heart and I want to just share it with you guys. And so I start ministering to all the leaders that were there. And I'm like, even if only one person showed up that needed to hear the gospel tonight, we did it all for the one, right? We all, we came here for the one. And then I shared for everybody else. I said, even if we don't have this massive turnout every week, God rewards our faithfulness to show up, to have the right heart in mind, to, to have a place ready and a time slot ready to bring new believers to we create the net god fills it with fish right and it's all so that and we can celebrate him for that and it also requires us to trust in god will you trust in god even when all the people don't show up right even when it seems like things aren't working out that well we need to trust in god in those moments and say okay i'm here I'm faithful. I'm obedient. I trust him. I'm going to do what I need to do in this moment. And I believe God will reward it in his perfect timing. 
And so the, but had it been a big group, I would not have done that. And all of these other things would not have happened. And so I look back today in this moment and say, that was not an accident. All these pieces he spoke to me about during journaling while putting together my testimony and thinking about this childhood thing that happened that actually had played out in weird little ways throughout the rest of my life. And then getting an opportunity to share it with somebody last night, which only happened because there wasn't a big group. Um, and then even uh, at the end of the night, we wrapped up and the evangelism team came back and they said, uh, yep, they went out and got a salvation that night. And I was like, there's the one, there's the one. And so um, we, God's going to speak to us in all these different ways. And we need to be expectant and say, okay, God, I know you show up and you speak to us in lots of different ways. And so write it down. Maybe you, you might not notice it unless you're cataloging it and paying attention. It would have been very easy for me not to even notice that. Um, in fact, it's not even until 15 minutes ago <laughs> that I realized that the small turnout last night played a role in me sharing that with that person. I didn't realize that until I started teaching all this. And so literally God is speaking to me as I'm explaining this other stuff to you guys about how he speaks and he's speaking to me in a not audible voice, but just by reminding me and making me aware and noticing that that happened and it would not have happened if all these other things didn't happen. And so another way God speaks to us is through our circumstances, through the experiences that we have. So we need to be paying attention. We need to be sober minded and paying attention what are the things that are coming into our mind and our experience? What are the feelings we're having? What are the, what are the things that are happening? In fact, um, even, uh, you know, even sometimes just showing up, you know, and, and I can think of another specific time when, um, when we wanted a lot more people to show up to do something, and I know at least one person is in the chat who will know what I'm talking about. We want a lot more people to be a part of what we're doing. But we show up and God speaks and communicates in a way where we're now talking about something that I think is blessing both of us and showing us that God is speaking to us. You see it? <laughs> Um, so we're almost out of time, but I'm, I'm happy to spend a whole hour on this. God is speaking to us and I think we need to be listening, start getting good at listening. Um, the, let's see if I can, uh, one other part to a question here. Um, it's important to spend alone time with God, worshiping, praying. How do I make it a priority without feeling like a burden or tradition or a chore? Um, what's wrong with me that I would even feel that way about time with God? Um, you know, it's part of the flesh. We, you know, it's part of the flesh. We want to be selfish, but also, um, like, like putting aside all the sinful stuff, the selfish stuff, all that, just, uh, we are part of our wiring is works mentality. <laughs> we want to do, 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 go, go, go. We want to be productive, right? Even like get going from laying around on, on the couch watching TV to just getting up and like doing the dishes feels like, at least I feel like I'm doing something now, right? There's something good about feeling productive. And so sometimes just sitting around talking with God and journaling and worshiping and praying, it can feel like, I feel like I'm not getting enough done. Um, you're not alone in feeling that way. I feel that way sometimes too. I feel like but I could go and record a video or I could go and write an article or I could write a, do a course or some, or I could counsel somebody I could spend, but I could be like productive and fruitful with this time. And God is saying, 
I could give you more in one minute with me than you could do on your own in 23 hours and 59 minutes. That's the truth. God could show up in one minute and do more than you could do in all your strength the rest of the day. So remember that. Um, you don't even have to carve out a large window of time at first. I was telling some guys on Monday night, like any other relationship, just show up. If the relationship is important, show up. And say, God, I'm just going to show up. Right? I was going to sit around and, and drink coffee or I was going to sit around and do this and that. Um, meet God for a cup of coffee or whatever tea or whatever you do, <laughs> uh, whatever your thing is. Um, if you like to sit out on the porch and, and just relax and read the Bible or whatever it is, whatever your thing is, just show up and give God an opportunity to show up with you. And when you do that and you show up expecting to encounter God, because I guarantee you, God is there and he's ready to speak to you and minister to your soul. So would you go if you knew that God was going to show up when you do? He's already there waiting for you. That changes That changes it. Um, it changes the trajectory of the rest of the day. And... Sometimes I think we just we want to be busy, we want to be productive, and other times we want excitement, we want adventure, um, we want variety, and so it can be hard to just sit still <laughs> and quiet the mind and uh, tune out all the distractions and just sit still in a place and be quiet, and so because we want to like do something, I want to do something exciting. And there are times for that. There are times when God will do crazy, exciting stuff with you. But, and there are times when he will use you in ministry and in service. But remember what Jesus said to Martha and Mary. Martha was working and serving and let me... Um, I'm going to tell you exactly where to find this. Um, and I put this in, uh, in I believe, let's see, uh, I think chapter 6 or ch chapter 5 when it comes to fruitfulness um, in the Empowered Christian Roadmap. But this is uh, in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. When Martha, you know, she's she's distracted and she's serving and she's trying to get food for everybody and she's all busy and she's kind of overwhelmed. And Mary, her sister, is just sitting there at Jesus' feet. And she's just sitting there listening to Jesus, soaking it all in. And, you know, um, it says, verse 40, Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Like, I'm doing all this work for you and to get food ready for you and everybody else here. And, and I'm doing all this stuff. And Mary's just sitting there at Jesus' feet. She's being boring. She's not helping. She's not serving. She's not being productive. She's just spending time with the Lord, right? This is Bible reading. This is journal. This is sitting and worshiping, spending time with him at his feet. Verse 41, but the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary, just one. How many of us are anxious and troubled? We want to be busy and go, go, go. We don't have time to spend quiet time with the Lord. And yet we feel anxious and stressed. Jesus says one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. 
This is the more important thing. If you show up one day on Judgment Day and you know we're ushered into the presence of the Lord, we'll be at the Bema Judgment, everyone who's saved. We don't want to say, Lord, we did all this and that, and we, we were doing all this work, and we did missions, and we did all this, but we didn't take the time to spend time with you and to actually build a relationship with you. We didn't have intimacy with us. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Um, it's so important that we spend time with the Lord because we need to have a good relationship with him. Now, that doesn't mean if you miss a day or you get, you know, stuff happens and you don't have quality time with the Lord that all of a sudden he doesn't know you and you're cast out of the kingdom and you're not saved. But what it means is like, this is the more important thing. There will be times when, when, you know, Jesus sends us to be a Martha to go and serve. Like, there's work to be done for the kingdom. There's loss that need to be saved. There's teaching that needs to be taught. There's disciples that need to be discipled. But the more important portion is to sit at Jesus' feet and have presence, to be in his presence, to have relationship with him. Um, one other uh, thing comes to mind when it comes to like, going and doing and doing all this mission work, which is, which is important. I'm so, my job is to mobilize you. Like this entire ministry's purpose is to get you free, get you renovated, get you mobilized and empowered so that you can help advance the kingdom of God in whatever way the Lord has called you to do that. And so, I want you to work hard for the kingdom. I want to be alongside you and help empower you as you're doing that and learning what that means and growing in all the things the Lord wants you to do. But if I let you go and you're reporting and you're saying, we're starting churches and we're doing this and I'm discipling this and I baptize this people and I shared the gospel with this many people and we're winning souls and we're, we're shutting down abortion clinics and whatever the, whatever the thing is that you're doing for the kingdom. And I say, well, what's your quiet time with the Lord look like? And you're like, well, I don't give, I don't have quiet time with the Lord. I'm too busy doing all this other stuff. I'm going to say you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to spend time with the Lord. It's the more important thing. Prioritize that. Prioritize it because it's the most important thing. You will make it a priority when you believe it's the most important thing. So hopefully I am doing that. And I want to give you one last thing uh, that Jesus said. Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And so, yeah, sometimes I'll focus more on the, the last half of this phrase and say it's about being righteous. It's about being a part of his kingdom and doing the, the will of the Father, right? It's about uh, growing in holiness and righteousness and pursuing and being after God's heart and being, uh, and being conformed to the, Im into the image of Christ. But... Today, I'm going to hone in on the other half of this sentence. I will declare to them, I never knew you. I did not have a relationship with you. You did not spend time with me. It's not about us knowing who he is. It's about him knowing who we are. Do we show up and give ourselves to him? Right? Did we? Do we show up and say, Here's the thoughts I'm thinking and the stuff I'm struggling with. And share it with him, right? That guy at the small group last night, he did not feel like he connected with me until I shared my stuff with him. And I've known him for months. I helped baptize him. I've, been, I've counseled to him. I've ministered to him. I've seen him cry a dozen times. And he felt more connected to me with me sharing something. And I didn't cry. I didn't break down. It wasn't even like, 
the Lord has already taken me so far with this thing. I can push past it and just ignore it and do what I'm supposed to do. All I was sharing was it doesn't come natural to me. I have to like be intentional about this for God's glory because it's, 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 you know, it's basically, it, was, it had to do with like connecting with people. It had to do with like walking up to strangers and stuff and, and building relationships that way. So this wasn't some major sin fallenness. It was just me being vulnerable. It was about me sharing myself. And as soon as I did that, he felt connected to me. God wants the same thing. Jesus wants to know us. We need to come to him regularly and say, here's who I am. Share, let me share myself with you and let you speak into my life and let you talk to me and listen and write it down, even if I'm not sure if it's you. You don't have to publish it and say, thus saith the Lord. This is just for your journal. If it's all your thoughts, it's okay. <laughs> Until you go and tell people, God said this when God did not say that, and there's like a false accusation. If you say, I think God said this to me, you are not lying. It's, there's no harm in writing it down. And you'll get better. And if the whole point of you doing it is to learn how to hear God better, God wants you to hear him better. He wants you to do this. He doesn't want you to wait for the hurricane and the earthquake and the fire. He wants you to listen to his still small voice. He wants you to be carefully listening, wanting to please him, to get out of your cave. So get out of your cave, go listen to his voice, spend quality time with him, make sure that God knows you. Spend time with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes they speak to each one independently. And so... Um, when you do that, when you believe it, if this truth has reached your soul, you don't have to force yourself to do it. Um, you just have to believe that that's the most important thing, that God wants a relationship with you. It's why he created you in the first place, was to have a relationship with you for eternity. So, of course, he wants that with us now. Of course. You think he wants people that just go and do a bunch of stuff for him but don't have a relationship with him personally? He could snap his fingers and everything is done on earth. This whole thing is he's building a family. He's building a family. And if we are not spending quality time with him, we are preventing that from happening. People will be more impressed and more won over for God in evangelism, not when we go to him, when we go to them and say, we have this great, perfect presentation of the gospel. We have this great, perfect theology with all this Bible knowledge. When we go to them and say, let me tell you who God is. And I talk and I share him, not as a theologian, but as a son or daughter. Let me tell you about my daddy. Let me tell you about my Savior. They're so awesome. It'll change everything. It'll change everything. And then we just have to crucify the flesh that wants to go eat when you start to feel it hunger. Say, no, you're gonna, I'm going to fast right now during this hour. We have to crucify the sinful desires of the flesh that want to be selfish. And we have to say, nope. I'm going to be disciplined to do this even if I don't feel like it because I know it's important. I know God wants me to. I know God will speak to me when I do it. And I, and I can tell you I've had plenty of times when I did not want to do it and I did it anyway. And I've had zero times when I regretted doing it afterwards. God is there, and when you enter into his presence, you'll be changed by it, and you're never going to regret that decision. All right. I hope all of that empowers you. Um, a whole hour plus on hearing from God and spending time with him. What a great topic. Um, I think that, yeah, I'm probably going to put this whole thing on YouTube.
<laughs> so, all right. Uh, have a blessed rest of your week, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you for the Freedom Friday. All right. God bless, and have a great rest of your week. Take care. Go and be empowered. And spend